So like that first map, uh, Nocturne Toten, it was pretty simple. We had zombies, uh, we had a few special weapons here and there, and we had the board breaking mechanic. Uh, the maps are pretty bare bones, almost all sound design, uh, with the exception of like round start and round end pieces of music. Um, and then over the course of the last decade plus, um, each map has now got its own original soundtrack. Um, obviously, there's the hidden songs that we have in the map. The sound design and what our audio guys do has always been an enormous part of Zombies. I mean, aside from the thousands and thousands of lines of dialogue that the characters have, they were the guys that said, I'm going to put a creepy noise in here, and I'm going to put someone whispering on the other side of this wall. And discovering just how much that audio could create an atmosphere and unnerve people was it really was one of the kind of initial building blocks of how narrative would grow in zombies. And they got more complicated, more events got thrown in, more Easter eggs, more radio diaries, more everything. We usually start off pretty early with decks and design docs to see what kind of mechanics there are going to be in a map. The deck is super helpful because it's not just script, it's also visuals. In Nine specifically, obviously the main visual that first came up was Coliseum type visuals. There's a call out for a dynamic crowd. So at that point, it's up to us to go, well, how, do we, how are we going to make that? Crowd audio was uh, a pretty complicated thing for us uh, because it wasn't just one set of sounds that had to be made. It was multiple systems that had to kind of work together and meld together in a way that made sense. It all started with uh, the designers of the map uh, had the affinity system where you were either doing good or bad. Ah, the sounds of praise! We kind of started off by saying, what kind of crazy thing can we do to record 500 people? Um, and all of the options were either super expensive or, you know, uh, not going to be easy to do. Uh, so we ended up doing what we call a Walla session, which are small groups of people, maybe like 20 actors, um, and came up with a language for these different chants that they could say, and basically just recorded this small group of people uh, for when you're doing well, when you weren't doing well, and then got those back, and obviously 20 people doesn't sound like a ton of people, so we handed that off to Scott Eckert, who did some magic uh, mixing those with uh, stadium and soccer samples that we have um, to make them sound like a huge crowd. Um, so once we got that into the game, it was cool, and the crowd was reacting correctly, and it sounded big. You know, it was implemented in, in 3D, uh, on multiple points. So as you move around the arena, the crowd will get louder and quieter and more and less reverb, just depending on you know, where you're standing. But it just wasn't enough. Uh, we wanted to make it cooler. So uh, we ended up talking with Jack Wall, the composer, and asked him to deliver the round start and round ending stingers uh, just for the, the above ground area in nine uh, as separate tracks. We got the choir, the drums, the strings and horns on separate tracks, and then implemented that in the crowd at the same time. So especially in surround sound, you're completely immersed with the music and the, the sound design, and we create this sort of new, for us anyway, experience. The sound design took time, and but then it was me trying to figure out how to script it that was probably the longest point. Uh, you know, I, I actually, in the map itself, I have little boxes in, in our tool and that's, okay, this is where the horns are, right? So it's, it's an actual specific point in the world that then I can grab and script and play sound off of it. So it is just a lot of checking to see where players are. Are they underground? Because if they're underground, we don't care about the crowd then because that's in the tombs and whatnot, and they're not actually gonna be hearing any of that. So I can just ignore players that are down there. Another interesting actual part that I had to script in was we had to decide, does the crowd play for all players? or does it only play for you? We decided on making it specifically players so there's less confusion about when you're spinning one up and down. If they're roaring positively, you know that's something you did and not something another player did. I think we got a pretty cool system that worked together and like really sold that crowd as impressive and real. Uh, it's still one of my favorite moments in any Zombies map I've worked on is just the opening of the map where you're in that tunnel and you just hear the chanting and it's low, it's occluded, and as you walk out, it just erupts into this huge roar, and then the music plays. It's one of the coolest things, I think, sound-wise we've done on the map. Audio are always there, kind of guiding the atmosphere. 
uh, with lots of little music stingers as, as well as just the, the, the ambient sound. Some maps have an obvious audio hook like Voyage. Obviously the, the ship is creaking and it's sinking so uh, we could really tie in a lot of ambient audio and storytelling into the fact that you're on a sinking ship versus older levels like Shino Numo which didn't have that kind of audio hook so we really just doubled down on as, as creepy a vibe as we could make. While we do have a library of sounds we can pull from, it's always better to get new stuff that is unique to the game. You know, bone break sounds or gore sounds or something like that. It's always fun to go into the sound booth with a watermelon and a pie cutter and you can make very, very disgusting noises with just those two items that you can easily put into the game. You know, honestly, like the, the audio design is su a supporting role in creating this experience. You know, if we do our jobs right, hopefully nobody picks out the fact that that sounded really cool. Hopefully they just go, that was an amazing experience. Like and share if you enjoyed the video and think others might benefit from this. And of course, subscribe and hit the notification button if you are new to the channel and want to be notified every time I post a video.